It's May the 17th, 2019, and uh, this is another excerpt from uh, the Business Army. Now, uh, in this, uh, uh, preceding this, uh, this uh, section, uh, the Roosevelt administration has begun uh, discussing the possibility of moving off the uh, gold standard. This is a uh, move that's intended to uh, free up capital for the, uh, for the federal government to uh, spend more on uh, job creation and boosting the economy. However, uh, moving off the gold standard is uh, uh, viewed with uh, something approaching horror by uh, a lot of uh, the wealthy in America because it would uh, lead uh, potentially, in their view, uh, to uh, a serious decline in the uh, worth of uh, the U.S. dollar. Interior, the country club where DuPont Morgan et al. previously met afternoon. DuPont, spitefully. That man! How did he get into power? Knudsen. Well, let's be fair. The nation is in crisis. Things have to be done. DuPont, he's meddling in the natural evolution of the marketplace. Knudsen, let's be reasonable. The bank holiday was the right thing to do. It helped staunch the bleeding. DuPont, sneering, yes, yes, and that's the right word to use, isn't it? Reasonable. But this is just the beginning, and all in this room well know that. What's important is where things will end. Knudsen, They'll end where they always do, with another election, and hopefully we'll be wiser next time and back a stronger candidate. DuPont. Elections. Tell that to the Italians or the Germans. They've found a better way. Morgan, as if offhandly, puffing on his pipe. My sources tell me there might be a move off the gold standard. Knudsen and DuPont look at him, not without alarm. DuPont. This must just be wild talk. Morgan, still puffing. That's not what my people say. DuPont lets out an angry sigh. Knudsen just keeps looking at Morgan, who gives the former a genial Cheshire-like grin. Interior, a middle-class house, dinner time. This is the home of Gerald Maguire, the pudgy man we first met in the diner. His mother, some uh, siblings, cousins, and in-laws are all sitting down for a Sunday dinner of roast chicken. Bowls of mashed potatoes, a basket of fresh baked buns, and a large bowl of coleslaw round out the meal. McGuire, with salivating enthusiasm. Gosh, mother, does this ever look swell? McGuire's mother flattered. Well, I worked on it all day, so I hope you enjoy it. B. Jerry... Since it's become a rarity to have you home like this, why don't you do the honors? They all bow their heads, Maguire mumbling. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For this is, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. And bless all the people in this house. Amen. Maguire's mother, brightly. That was lovely to all. Now, please. There's enough for everyone. A nephew with a thin face. Jeez, auntie. Niece, the, fir the first uh, nephew's sister, kicking him under the table and whispering sharply, Don't swear. Nephew, I didn't. Niece, you did. SFX, the sound of cutlery scraping and chewing. Maguire, gosh, this is good, mother. You wouldn't believe how tired one gets of diner food going from place to place making all those calls. Maguire's mother, so how is it, dear? Is your business still good? Maguire, ostensibly to his mother, but in a showy voice. Well, that's exactly the thing. Business is still there, but these days you've got to work so much harder to get it. He beams at the table. No one returns his gaze. Maguire continuing. Boy, do one's feet ever get tired, turning to his wife. 
and it keeps me away many hours, doesn't it, dear? Mrs. McGuire. Yes, to all. All he seems to do is work. Nephew. I get sore feet, too, but that's looking for work. Niece, sardonically. Something, by the way, you've been doing for over ten months now. Nephew, turning on her. It's not my fault, sis. I didn't want this slump. Niece. A slump is no excuse. Look at Uncle Jerry. You heard him. Times are tough, but he just works tougher. Nephew. Look who's talking. You just go to school all day and then come home back in the evenings and listen to the radio. You don't know anything about real life. McGuire to his nephew. There, there. We know times are difficult, but that's no reason to join the Wallowers Club. Nephew, already having signed up. Uncle Jerry, don't you start picking on me too. McGuire. I'm not picking on you. Nephew, determined to make a point. Everybody blames the little guy. Everybody says it's his fault. But look who caused the slump in the first place. It wasn't the working men in their factories or the housewives in their homes. It wasn't the doctors and dentists in their offices. It wasn't the milkman on the street. It was that Wall Street gang. They had a giant party and took home carts of money. And what happened when the slump started? Did they pitch in and help by taking some of that money that ended up in their pockets and giving a percentage back to help fix this mess? No, they just put it all in their friends' banks, and let the rest of us hang. McGuire, that is a very crude and inaccurate description of what went on. Nephew, now carried away. No, it's not. So what if I didn't finish at the top of my class in high school? I can still figure things out, and that's the truth of the matter. The president said it right. It's the greed of the moneylenders that's at the root of all this. They like the economic system as long as they can take and take and take. But when it goes bust and they have to give some of it back and think of the good for all, what do they do? Keep it for themselves. The government should just take most of their millions away. Give it to the common man who's got more use for it and will spend it to get over this slump once and for all. McGuire, sharply. That's just radical talk. It's dreaming. Sure, it's easy to say. The government should take other people's money. But how would you like it if they took it, did it to you, nephew? I don't have any, uncle, and at the rate things are going, I never will. But if I did, I wouldn't keep it all to myself or bleed the working man the way the moneylenders do. Maguire, Christian moneylenders don't do that. Nephew, they darn well do. Niece, shushing, no swearing. <laughs>